Welcome back everybody to another motorbot video. We're here at Eichma in Milan, the biggest and best motorcycle show in the world, I reckon. And we've just showed up at the Royal Enfield stand to have a look at this, the brand new Himalayan 450. It really does look like a massive evolution for this bike. It's an all new design, new engine, new chassis, lots of new tech. And so here we go with the key things that you need to know about it. So let's start with the engine. And here we've got the Scram 411, which uses the same air-cooled single as the previous generation Himalayan. And look, while it is a proven platform and they've sold plenty of these, plenty of Himalayans, for me, this engine at like 20 odd horsepower just feels a bit underpowered. And also versus some of the competition, like the KTM 390 Adventure, and the Honda CB500X, you're a good 15 or 20 horsepower down. So it did need, I think, to be competitive, a bit of a change. So here we have it. This, as you can tell, has no cooling fins. So it's a new liquid cooled single cylinder, 452 cc, and it does bump up power significantly. So we're talking 40 PS at 8,000 RPM and a healthy 40 Newton meters of peak torque at five and a half thousand RPM. For me, those sort of power figures just sound a lot more reasonable for higher speed work, you know, 60, 70 mile per hour, where the other one started to wheeze a bit. I think this is gonna be much more appropriate, much more engaging to ride and a bit more frisky and fun. How cool is this paint job, by the way? I really like this sort of graphical treatment. We'll talk about the different paint jobs that are available a little bit later, but wrapped around this engine, we've got a brand new twin spa steel tubular frame. And also we've got a bolt on steel subframe here as well. So that's good news. If you do ride off road and drop it, you bend the subframe. You don't have to replace the whole frame or write the bike off. You can just swap it out by removing these bolts here. Weight wise, they quoted a whole bunch of different weights. Let me have a quick look. So 181 kilograms dry, 196 kilograms curb for this bike, and then 198 kilograms with standard equipment, whatever that means. And so not super lightweight, but it is reasonable. I guess I was maybe hoping they'd cut a bit more weight versus the previous gen, but I think it's probably only one or two kilograms difference. Now, another little bit of a qualm that I have with the previous generation is that some of the equipment was pretty basic. So you had a regular telescopic fork. The performance was fine for a budget bike, but not particularly brilliant. And so it's good to see a bit of an upgrade here. You can see it's a 43 millimeter upside down fork. It looks like it's gonna be, you know, a little better quality, but also with an upside down fork, the heavier part is at the top here. And so when you've got less unsprung weight because the thinner parts down here, that means the suspension can more easily do its job. So you should get better ride quality. Quite like these little fork guards here as well with the Himalayan logo with the previous gen. It had little fork gaiters to protect the sliders from, you know, gravel and rocks and stuff like that. These look quite cool. You've got to have those to protect this bit down here. And then at the rear, we've still got a mono shock, but you do get 20 mil more travel on the rear. So it used to be 200 at the front, 180 at the rear. Now it's 200 both front and rear. So maybe slightly better off-road performance. Now onto the braking and up front, we've got a two-pot Vibre caliper. Vibre being a budget sub-brand of Brembo. So it should be decent stuff. And it is on a nice big 320 mil disc. So one would expect reasonably powerful for a bike of this sort of stature. At the rear, you've got a relatively big disc as well. So it's a 270 mil and you've got dual channel ABS, which is also switchable at the rear. So you can switch the rear off, get the bike sliding around, which is pretty much essential for any decent off-road riding. Onto the wheels and of course, we've got spokes that should offer plenty of strength for off-road riding. And it's a big 21 inch front with a 90 by 90 tire. So good rolling on rougher surfaces, nice and skinny. And then at the rear, we've got a 140 by 80 and that's a 17 incher. And so not super wide, but probably appropriately spec for a 40 horsepower bike. And that brings me nicely onto our sponsors for this week. And that's Insta360 and Metzler tires. Now you know what would make a great upgrade for this bike, a set of beautiful Metzler Carus or Carry Streets. They're their adventure tire. In my experience, absolutely brilliant. The Carry Street is a little bit more road focused. The Carou a little bit more grippy and blocky and a bit more mug clearance. If you do want to take your off-roading a little more seriously, but also we've tested a whole bunch of bikes over over the years that have been fitted with Metzler tires and I've always been super impressed. Specifically recently we've tried out the Sportec M9 RRs on the Triumph Thruxton. Super sticky, great for sporty bikes where you want handling to be peak. But also there's some great all-rounders in their lineup like the Rotex which are more of a sports touring tire. So look, do check out the link down in the description for their full range. They make an excellent choice for your bike next riding season and once again a massive thanks to Metzler. Woo 
for their support. Now, one thing I've noticed just sitting up here on the bike is how much wider the tank feels. The previous gen has that sort of big, more blocky shaped tank. This has a flared design that comes out and it is a little bit larger. It's 17 liters to the 15 of the previous gen. I'm not sure if this engine, because it's a bit more powerful, is more thirsty on fuel. Maybe we'll test it out when we get one for a press ride back in the UK. But it does feel a bit more cocoon-like. It flares out and maybe that's gonna give you a little more wind protection around the lower body. As for seat height, well, you've got two choices of seat, the standard seat and the low seat, and they're adjustable between two positions. So the standard seat is 825 mil and it can go up to 845. The low seat is at 805 and it can go up to the same 825 in the high setting as the standard seat in the low setting, if you get what I mean. Basically, 805 or 825 for the low, 825 or 845 for the standard. And I think that will make it very appealing to people who want an adventure bike that isn't massive, you know, something that's quite accessible. The bar position on this bike is nice and wide as you'd expect for an adventure bike. And it feels quite natural to go between sitting and standing. Pegs are off-road biased as well. You've got removable rubber inserts. So keep the rubbers in to keep the vibes down on the road. But if you take them out, you've got the grippy edges so they'll grip into your boots, even if you're in muddy conditions. Looks quite decent on the back for a passenger as well. Nice big seat, some proper grab rail so you can hang on properly. And yeah, all round feels nice and comfortable and just a bit more substantial, I think, than the previous gen. Now, big upgrade in the cockpit here is a new TFT display that's round as opposed to the analog clocks on the previous generation. And I think this looks really good. I like that it's sort of traditional with the rev count around the outside, but also it packs a lot of features. So you've got phone connectivity for controlling calls and music through the switch gear, and also navigation built in, which is powered by Google Maps, which is quite important because sometimes proprietary nav systems aren't as good as Google Maps at routing and things like that. So I'd like to know there's Google tech behind this. Also through here, you can control three riding modes. You've got a ride-by-wire throttle now, so that means you can have different maps. And so yeah, combined with the LED lighting all around, I really like the tail lights, which are sort of integrated with the indicators. You know, this tech package feels a lot more modern than the previous bike and really does seem more competitive with the other bikes that are on the market in this particular segment. Now look, one thing that Enfield always do really well in my opinion is offering lots and lots of vibrant and different color options and this bike is no different you've got five different choices for the Himalayan 450 this one behind me with the gold is called Hani Black I think if that's the right way to pronounce it but I do like the look of it with the gold wheels it looks maybe slightly retro but definitely very cool another favorite is the gray with the blue that one is called Slate Poppy Blue I believe there's a gray and red called Slate Himalayan Salt and then you've got a white version called Kamut White and also Kaza Brown which is like a khaki light brown sort of color. For me, this is my favorite because of the gold wheels. They always look good on an adventure bike, but let me know your pick down in the comments below. Price-wise, well, we don't have a price for this bike yet, so that's the all-important context for judging the sort of um, impressiveness of any bike. But the previous gen is just under five grand, which makes it an absolute snip. I think the KTM 390 Adventure is just under six grand, and then the Honda CB500X is typically just under seven grand. So I'd imagine probably in that sort of £6,000 area is where it's going to want to be. Definitely looking forward to checking this one out and trying it back in the UK. I think it's going to be a really fun little bike and a big improvement on the previous gen, which I wasn't that keen on, to be honest. Even though it's a great seller, for me, it just wasn't that fun to ride. But this, yeah. Definitely looking forward to it. As always, let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. I always enjoy reading your thoughts. Check out the playlist that's on the screen as well. That's all our Eichmann content. There are so many bikes coming, so do try and stay up to date with it. If you've not already, hit subscribe, and that way you'll see all the videos as soon as they go live. Many thanks for watching, and stick around, and we'll be back in, you know, an hour or so with another video.